Hi, this is Mori reporting from Berlin, and uh, in this video, I want to introduce you to, uh, yeah, brushes in D3. So a brush in D3 is this uh, gray box you can see on top of my line chart, and it allows me to select a sub portion of my line chart, and uh, I can then extract and display the selected values as you can see here. Uh, yeah, it will be responsive. Uh, we can even add some new data to it and select the new data. And uh, yeah, this is what we're going to do in this video. We'll be just building this brush on top of a line chart. But in the next video, we will be building a functionality similar to the minimap or the uh, preview function in VS Code. So there will be two charts where one uh, will just uh, allow us to select the sub portion and another chart which will uh, yeah, display the selected sub portion uh, like in VS Code. So uh, stay tuned. By the way, you can find this video and other videos that I have uh, published on YouTube uh, here on my new website, moratorium.com. Uh, you will even find some articles in the future. Uh, there are currently no articles, but I am thinking of writing an article about this uh, like brush topic in D3. So stay tuned for that one as well. So yeah, this is our uh, line chart uh, without the brush. This is going to be our starting point for this video. Uh, but if you're interested in like uh, creating this line chart in general, I suggest you watch uh, video number two for the line. Uh, video number three for the uh, axes and video number six for the uh, responsive uh, behavior. So, yeah. So, yeah, this is the data we're currently working with. It's just an array with some numbers in it. And uh, if you have watched the videos that I've uh, mentioned earlier, you know that we're using a scale linear or an X scale to map the index values in that data array to pixel values on our X axis. Then we're using another scale linear, the Y scale, to map the uh, like values in that data array to pixel values on our Y axis. Then uh, I am rendering a path element with the help of the line or the line generator function from D3. Then I am rendering a circle for every value in my data array. And here I am setting up the axes, the X and the Y axis. Um, and they are getting rendered in these group elements that I prepared because uh, D3 will render everything it needs, all of the ticks here, for example, these lines, inside uh, these group elements, this, these G elements. And this is important because the brush that I've shown earlier, this like gray box, uh, will also be rendered inside another group element we need to now prepare uh, yeah, for having a brush. So now I will just add the uh, group element where my brush will be rendered into, uh, like so. I will just give it the class name brush. And here is where I want to like initialize the brush uh, logic. And uh, in order to like have this brush that I can move along the X axis that I have shown earlier, um, I need to import something from D3 called brush X. So the const brush is going to be the brush X. And this is where I have to now define uh, several things. So yeah, the first thing that we need to define here is the so-called extent. And the extent just defines where this gray box, uh, the brush, can move on top of our uh, SVG. And we want it to be able to move from the top left corner to the bottom right uh, corner of our SVG, so the entire space. And that we do by just saying uh, 0, 0, and uh, width and height, so the total width and total height of our SVG. And that is actually enough for the brush generator for now. Uh, we will add some uh, another, some more things later, but we can see the brush in action now by uh, rendering uh, this brush inside our uh, G or group element down here. And we do that by saying SVG, select the like brush group element down there and then call the brush like, or summon this brush inside that, uh, yeah, group element. And if I save that, you can then uh, not see the brush yet, but you can actually create the brush because it doesn't have any, like, default position. So to give our brush um, a default position or a default selection, we need to add another dot call. And uh, here we need to say brush.move with the additional argument uh, 
let's say from 0 pixels to 100 pixels. And what this will do is it will call this like brush.move function uh, for the current selection, this like group element here. And uh, it will also provide this like argument for the uh, range of the brush. So it will be then rendered from 0 pixels to 100 pixels. Uh, this is fine for now. Uh, we can like move it, resize it and so on. But every time we update our chart, the brush will then be moved back to this position we have defined here. Uh, this is something we're going to change later on. Uh, so just uh, yeah, keep that in mind. So what we want to do now is we want to handle the brush events. So we want to know when the brush moves, where it is, what the current selection is, and so on. And we can do that by going to our uh, brush generator again here and by saying dot on. And here is uh, where we first have to define uh, what kind of events we want to handle. And we want to handle three different types of events. The start event, so when the brush is starting to move, uh, then the brush event itself, so when the brush is like moving, so every on uh, every move, and the end event, when the brush uh, has ended moving. And then we pass in a callback function, and in order to access the event in D3, it is not that easy, it is not passed as an argument here, we need to import the event object from D3. And we can find uh, the selection of that brush in that event object. So let me just show you, um, how that event uh, looks like. So if I click on the brush, you can see the start event gets triggered. If I let go, the end event uh, gets triggered. And if I have a look at the event here, you can see the current selection is from 0 pixels to 100 pixels. And if I move the brush or resize it, then you can see the current selection is uh, from 75 pixels to 279 pixels. And uh, what we want to do now is we want to find out if there is any dot behind uh, this gray box. Is there any like dot within the range of our brush? And to do that, we need to make use of our scales again. So you might remember our X scale is responsible for transforming index values in our um, data array into pixel values on our SVG, uh, on our x-axis. So um, you can see here that the second dot of our SVG has an x pixel value of uh, 105 pixels for the index value of 1. And uh, we can easily find out if that dot is behind our uh, like box or if it is within the range of our brush uh, by just comparing this pixel value. We can see, OK, this has a pixel value of 105. And the pixel value range of our brush is from 75 to 279. So that means it is behind our brush. But what we can also do, and that is uh, what we're going to do now to make it a bit more spicy and uh, so that you learn something new, uh, the X scale is actually capable of transforming these pixel values here we have for the brush into index values, so the reverse operation. We were transforming index values to pixels, and now we want to transform pixels back to index values. And uh, with that, we can now compare like if there's actually any data with the index value uh, somewhere between 0 0.7 and 2.6 or something. And we're not going to compare the pixel values, but we are going to compare the uh, calculated index values uh, of our selection here. So to uh, find out the index range and not the pixel range of our uh, brush here, we need to go to our uh, callback function and say const index selection, for example, equals event dot selection uh, map and then x scale invert. So every value in that selection, these pixel values, will then be given to our xscale dot invert function, which will transform not index values to pixel values, but pixel values to index values. So uh, let's see how the uh, index selection here looks like. If I save that <coughs> and uh, move the uh, brush, you can see we can now see the index values we are covering with our brush. One small but important thing to note is that uh, the brush can be null or the selection of the brush can be null 
if I actually click outside of the brush once. So this will uh, cause an error, and that is why we have to actually make sure that there is an event dot selection. Uh, otherwise, we don't want to uh, do anything. So this index selection, I now want to save in a use state hook uh, for two reasons. The first reason is uh, I want to use it here for the brush.move um, argument, because um, every time the component updates, the brush is moved to this like selection uh, of 0 to 100 pixels. And I don't want that when, for example, the yeah, browser resizes. And I also want to use this index selection for my circles, because I want to render my circles a bit differently, depending on uh, if they are um, behind the brush or not. So to do that, I will import uh, use state from React, and then I'm going to go here and say const uh, selection and set selection equals use state. And here I am now going to define a new like default uh, range for my brush, uh, but not as pixel values, but as uh, index values. So I am going to say from 0 to 1.5. And then I am going to use this uh, selection or this default index selection here uh, for my uh, like default position of my brush. And here I'm going to say selection dot map. And then I'm going to say X scale. So this will make sure that um, like every index value uh, like, or like the default index values from zero to 1.5 are now uh, like transformed by our X scale to like pixel values because the selection or this brush move needs a pixel values as an argument. So if I save that, uh, you will see that, uh, yeah, now our default uh, index selection range or the brush range is from the index value 0 to 1.5. So now I want to save this uh, selection in the use state token. For that, I'm going to say use. Oh, I'm sorry, a set selection, uh, index selection. And you will quickly notice that we will run into an infinite loop. Then that is because when the component updates, the brush is moved to this like position uh, from 0 to 1.5. And this will trigger uh, this function here, this callback function. And this will like set the selection. It will store it in this use state hook. And this will cause the component to update again. And then uh, the brush move will be triggered again, and then this set selection and back and forth, and this causes an infinite loop. So we can fix this loop issue by making sure that this code block here is only called when the selection is not changing. And uh, if I try to like change the selection, as you can see here, um, it will not work because um, yeah, this code block will always move the brush to the initial position which is stored in this use state hook. And uh, we can check if the selection has changed or not by using another hook that I have copied from the React FAQ called use previous. And uh, with that you can basically store any variable and um, in the next render of a component you can check if that variable has changed since the last render. Um, that is something you could do easily with class components but uh, you cannot do that with functional components that easily, and that is why you have to use this um, use previous hook. And uh, that I am now going to use by going up here and importing it, because it just uh, resides in another in another file. Uh, it is going to be import use previous from use previous, and then I'm going to go here and say const previous uh, selection equals uh, use previous selection. So I will now have uh, the previous selection at my disposal and then I'm going to go down here and say if the previous selection is the same as the current selection then I want to call this entire code block and if I save that you will see the warning has gone I can move the brush around and it will actually remain proportionally at the same uh, position even if I resize uh, the browser uh, window. So yeah. So now that I have fixed the uh, loop issue and uh, that I have the 
selection in a, a use state hook, I can now focus on the circles and make sure that uh, the circles which are behind the brush are rendered a bit differently. And I want to give them a different radius depending on yeah, if they are in the brush or not. And for that, I want to access the uh, value and the index value of the current uh, piece of data in a callback function. And um, then I'm going to say, hey, is the index that I currently have like uh, larger than the selection a zero, so the first value in our selection. And also I want to check if the index is like uh, less or equal to selection uh, one, so the uh, like second value of our uh, brush. And if that is the case, um, I want the radius to be four, and if not, I want it to be two. So if I now save that, you will see uh, that the uh, circles which have uh, or which are like behind the brush now have uh, yeah a different radius. And I want to do the same for uh, the fill attribute. So I will just copy this part here um, and say fill. So if the um, yeah, index value is like inside my brush range, I want the fill to be orange. And if not, I want it to be black. Yeah. Cool. And to just show the currently selected uh, values in my data array down here under my uh, SVG, I just added this small tag where I am filtering over the data that I have and just basically doing the same check uh, I did earlier for the circles if the like value is in my brush range. And uh, yeah, then I am just separating these, separating these values by comma. And yeah, that's it. So yeah, that's it for uh, this video. Um, I hope you liked it. Let's see if it still works if I add some new data. Works fine. Also if I resize the browser window. Yeah. So uh, like I said, in the next video, we will not just be displaying the values down here, but we will actually be rendering a second chart, which will just uh, show the currently highlighted section in this upper chart. So uh, yeah, stay tuned for that one. It will be similar to the um, functionality, you know, from uh, VS Code and this like minimap functionality. So um, yeah, um, I hope you like this one. I hope you learned something or two. Uh, let me know what you think and uh, yeah, see you in the next one.